A vulnerability of a smart contract in one private DAO fund first led to the leak of cryptocurrency worth tens millions of dollars, billions as of today. And then the hard fork of the second largest blockchain network, Ethereum. You can find tons of articles investigating those events, including a wiki page. Hi, my name is Alexey Konashevich and you are on Blockchain State. I would like to draw some conclusions of the DAO crisis and Ethereum hard fork. But let's first refresh in memory what happened in 2016. The DAO was a startup that ran an investment fund in Ether and operated as a smart contract on Ethereum. The DAO is a proper name that founders decided to take as a reference to a general concept of Decentralized Autonomous Organization or DAO. The fund claimed from the very beginning that they operate under the terms and conditions of their smart contract that was nothing more than a code of a program deployed on the blockchain. Their website contained no legal terms and conditions, but a notice proclaiming the supremacy of the machine code over any human readable text to explain this code. Though the DAO became infamous due to a vulnerability in their program that allowed an unknown user to drain one-third of their funds, the loss of 3.6 million either valid at the time, at around 60 million or around 7.3 billion as of today. The fund had more than 10,000 investors in view of negative implications and high public pressure faced by Ethereum. The network leaders decided to introduce a retroactive hard fork of their blockchain. In the result of the fork, the funds of the DAO were moved to a recovery address, thus the funds users could claim their investments back. There were objectors of the hard work, and so those who didn't agree continued to use the original Ethereum blockchain, calling it Ethereum Classic. It operates still these days, utilizing a genuine chain of blocks where the unknown person owns the drained funds. One of the major debates was around the question, was it a SEPT at all? The United States Securities and Exchange Commission investigated the case and published their report. The report contained the words steal and attacker if it was qualified by default. To this day, there hasn't been criminal investigation or at least the authorities failed to address it properly. Right after the conduct the unknown, let's call them more neutral, not the attacker, published an anonymous letter stating that they didn't believe it was a wrongdoing or any kind of violating either of law or terms, referencing that infamous statement of the DAO's side of the prevalence of the smart contract. Many commentators in fact supported the conclusion that the unknown did nothing wrong, as they exploited the legitimate feature of the code, which objectively existed and was even known to the developers. The case still has a lot of unanswered questions that are much broader than it may seem, and much harder, if not speculative. These questions must be addressed by philosophers, governments and blockchain communities in order to move forward. The case has shown the world how smart contracts might be vulnerable, which makes the whole concept of code is law questionable. American legal scholar Larry Lessig came up with this concept much earlier than the invention of blockchain. It also showed how retroactivity in blockchain can occur when the majority supports it. Can we say that the mutability of the blockchain was compromised? But we still have Ethereum Classic, which is immutable. Ethereum is technically a new network that has the similar history of transactions till the moment of the hard fork. What's the point of the blockchain if alternative forks in history are possible? Was it a flaw of the technology or an advantage that we should learn how to deal with? Let's go even further. What if we encountered a new phenomenon in law and governance. Should parallels be drawn to find answers? Parallel from governance and law. 
statute laws adopted in a democratic way, such as by elected legislators, reflect the consensus of the majority. Normally, the minority must obey. They cannot violate the law. If code is law, and the blockchain is a statute where this law is written and executed in the form of a smart contract, then what is a hard fork? Is it disobedience? Unlikely. Blockchain retroactivity and hard forks are always a possible option. The minority of nodes in that hard fork technically did nothing. They just left with the original ledger to protect their interests. Hard forks and retroactivity are not breaches or malicious acts. They are normal in this technology. Parallel from business. Ethereum itself can be thought to the kind of business. Miners create and validate blocks and get revenue. A department cannot become separate from the company just by the will of such a department. However, this can happen based on the decision of the shareholders or the authorities, for example, a court. Normally, in companies, functions of governance and production are distinguished. The shareholders and the factory Thus, who are miners, the authorities or the producers? Parallel from criminal law and justice. There are opposite opinions on whether the unknown committed a crime or legitimately exploited an undeclared possibility of the code. The DAO has never introduced terms and conditions in human spoken language and declared that the smart contract defines the terms Thus, there is no official contract in a traditional sense, so we can define a breach. Any human words to describe the code would be someone's interpretation. Those who don't think that it was a crime emphasize that nobody put a notice of trespass. The poor design of the smart contract couldn't protect the fund. Users were free to act at their discretion, while there were no legal prohibitions. People are not punished for drinking from a creek if there is no sign of private property. Hence, contractual and private laws didn't protect it. Nevertheless, the United States Securities and Exchange Commission used the words attacker and steal in their report, but didn't specify why exactly they believed it was a crime. Parallel from a mob law. If it was a crime, then what was the hard fork? Was it a mob law? Stealing back is not a legitimate way of justice and return of property. In a civilized society, it is classified as a crime as well. There are police, prosecutors, courts and marshals set up for exactly that. What if it was a phenomenon of a new blockchain justice based on a specific form of digital democracy? Parallel from anarchy. If it was neither a crime or an act of justice, then what? Maybe it was a pure form of market competition, where no authorities and state power exist. Then there is a word that describes it, that is anarchy, which can be defined as the state of society being freely constituted without authorities or a governing body, or in this case, crypto anarchy. All these questions are yet to be further explored. Doing so will ensure the development of a better public policy towards blockchain technology and a better strategy for future DAOs. See you in the next video.